Alright, so you can see that most of the body work is done on the monogram orbiter. I still have a few things to do here and there, but for the most part, um, I'm happy with uh, where we're at. Now, if you remember, at the beginning of our video series, I mentioned that one of the inaccuracies of the monogram kit was, in fact, the size of the windows. And let me just zoom in here, and we will talk about that. Now, Minogram did a very, very good job on the overall shape of the orbiter. It really is dead on uh, for the most part, as far as I can tell. And um, the only exception is the size of these windows. So this appears to me, at least, to be a deliberate uh, oversize, and perhaps it might be to allow someone who's viewing the model to be able to see inside the flight deck, because they did a pretty good job on the cockpit. Um, these are the transparencies from the Ravel Orbiter, and these are about the right size for 172nd scale. So if you put these besides, beside the uh, monogram transparencies, you can see there's a huge, huge difference, and we just can't let this go uncorrected. So my plan here is I'm going to use the Ravel transparencies as a guide, and I'm going to make some templates out of masking tape and then apply those to these monogram windows and then fill in the rest. Now there is a step down here and that's going to require a bit of work to try to make sure that that looks like it's supposed to but I'm pretty confident that I can pull that off so that's that's the plan. Alright so here are the, the two Ravel transparencies covered with to my masking tape. So I'm going to take these and put them on here and we're going to be using this um, photograph off the back of the Return to the Light Space Shuttle Discovery photo scrapbook to try to get as close as we can. Now my understanding is that even the Ravel windows are not exactly accurate but um, we'll be able to get pretty close. I Okay, so that's done, and as you can see, I've got the Tamiya tape on each window panel. Now, this is not perfect. This isn't exactly easy to do this. Um, these are approximate shapes, and I'm going to have to go back after I do the putty work and get it all sanded out. I'm sure I'm going to have to go back and, and touch this up, um, but I think it's uh, the best uh, that I can do here. I wish there was a better way of doing this. Maybe the strip styrene method is better. But I give this a shot, see how it turns out. Thing is, this doesn't work 
<clears throat> if this doesn't work, I can pull this out and try the strip styrene method. Alright, now, admittedly, that looks, <clears throat> that looks disastrous, and uh, it may turn out to be, but uh, in any case, um, if this doesn't work for me, if I can't get this looking like I need to have it looking, then I'll pull all this out and, uh, and try again. So, there you go. Okay, so um, here are the windows with the framing filled in, and I've sanded uh, a couple times on these and gone back and made some um, corrections. And uh, I think it's going to turn out okay. I just got to work it for a little while. It looks pretty rough right now, I know. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you here is um, the um, shuttle has these two items here which are star tracker ports which um, are not represented uh, very well on, on either the monogram or the Ravel shuttles so I've taken a pin vise here um, and drilled out here and here and then I've taken an exacto and I've started to hollow out you know the, the holes and I'll have to shape them with a, with a small uh, round file and uh, do a couple other things to get those looking like they're supposed to look. Well, you can have a plan A and a plan B, but sometimes you need a plan C. If you recall, when we first started working on this orbiter, one of the problems we identified was the fact that the windows are just too large. And that leaves us with a dilemma as um, how to actually fix it. And it ain't easy, let me tell you. Now, in doing research for this kit, I came across some suggestions. Uh, one suggestion was to just use decals and put the glass in normally and use decals to, to cover um, the glass that you don't want clear. And that sounds like a great idea, except for the fact that the windows have a significant step down from the surrounding fuselage, and that would be very, very apparent. Uh, decal is not going to cover that. Uh, another suggestion was to put sheet, or rather I should say strip, styrene around the window openings and make them smaller and uh, get the shape just right, and then back that with um, sheet clear styrene to represent the windows themselves. That probably would work. What I chose to do instead, initially, was to use the Revell Orbiter windows as a template to make masks for the clear glass on the monogram kit. So I put, I, I made the masks, I put them down on the glass, and then I puttied around them to bring the level of the fuselage up to that adjacent to the windows. And I thought that was going to be great. I'd pull the masks off and we're good to go. Well, not so fast, because when you pull the mask off, because it's such a huge step up, it's probably close to a millimeter maybe, then you have um, some edges that, that are not clean. So then you have to go back and try to clean up these edges of this putty uh, right next to this plastic, and you can imagine what happens. You get scratches and gouges, and even though you try to polish them out, um, it's difficult to do because the windows are stuck down, you know, they're recessed in, you know, a millimeter or so, or half a millimeter or so. So, what else can you do? Well, I tried to strip off all this putty, and we're on to pretty much um, plan C here, and that is to cut out the window shapes actually out of the clear plastic. I use actually a Dremel to knock this out. And uh, just generally, all the way around, knocked them out with a Dremel. And then I came back um, with my microfiles, and I'm shaping each window one by one. And what I'm using to shape the window is, of course, the Revell windows. Okay? So I'll get them shaped you know, just right. I've got one done here. 
And uh, what I'll do is I'll go back after I've get I got them all done. I'll go back and I will vacuum form this piece. Now I can't put this piece straight in because these glass panels are much closer together than than here represents. But if I cut each glass panel apart individually, I should be able to put them in, no problem. And that hopefully is the answer to this dilemma, and we can move on to some other things. So I've shaped all these windows. This is the original monogram glass, which has been basically dremeled through, drilled through, and then shaped with some files. So I'm going to come along right now and put some uh, Tamiya white putty over this to uh, to try to, to fix a lot of the little cracks and stuff in here. Okay, so this is Tamiya white. might take a couple of applications Okay, yeah, this is alcohol. Just smoothing that a little bit. 91% alcohol. Just make it a little bit easier to sand, do it smoother. So by taping this off, we've got the putty confined to right around the windows. Be easier to work with. <clears throat> Let that dry good. And sand it down.